Hello friends, it's Jasmine. I hope you're all doing very well today and welcome back to another travel vlog here in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. The sky is so incredible. This morning it's just nice and blue and the view is amazing and I'm very excited to explore more of Kuala Lumpur today. So we're going to check out some more temples and areas and just really immerse ourselves more into the culture. Oh, by the way, I got this new dress the other day from Central Market and it's nice and flowy and I think it'll match really nicely with the temples. Love it! So I've arrived here at Tian Ho Gong now or the Tian Ho Temple. I actually came around an hour and a half ago and I just spent the whole time taking photos. It's just one of the most beautiful and incredible temples I've ever visited and I don't really like comparing at all and I have visited a lot of temples in the past. I think every temple is beautiful and unique in its own way but this one is just is out of this world. It's just incredible. So serene, so beautiful and divine. And you immediately notice all the lanterns at the top and it's just so I don't know how else to describe it other than beautiful and this is really a place you've got to come and see for yourself. So the Tian Ho Gong was built in 1894 and is one of the largest and oldest temples in Southeast Asia and it is dedicated to the Chinese sea goddess who is also called Ma Zhu or also known as Tian Ho which is what this temple is named after and there are elements of Taoism, Confucianism, Buddhism here so people of all religions come to pray here and they also come here to worship Guan Yin who is the goddess of mercy and I know Guan Yin since I was a little child from watching Xi Ji. Let me know if you've watched that too. <laughs> but yeah, when you come here, it really feels like you've just completely stepped into China and it's just amazing how in different areas of Kuala Lumpur, it feels like you're stepping into China and then you're stepping into India. There's just an abundance of cultures here. It is amazing. That's something I've truly fallen in love with about Kuala Lumpur. And then when you walk along the sides, you have a 360 view of Kuala Lumpur and it's, a, like I said, a beautiful day. It's a blue sky. It just contrasts so nicely with the red color as well. <sighs> wow. I definitely recommend that if you come here, you come early in the morning so you avoid the heat because it is definitely getting very hot now. I just, I love, absolutely love this architecture. It just brings me so much joy. Like I'm honestly just so happy right now just walking along here. So much appreciation. I love how they have Chinese written on the pillars as well. And this one says, Zhen Xu Shen Twin something something. I can't really read the rest. Oh, actually, Hu A is at the bottom as well. So it's something about cherishing life and love. Something that travel has taught me is that regardless of our differences and beliefs and religions, we can still embrace and learn from each other and have an open heart. We are human beings rooted in love, and when we come to understand our oneness and accept the diversity of this world, seeing our differences not as things that separate us but bring us together, that is what will transform us and create more love and peace. If you follow me on Instagram and you're wondering how I took my photos here as a solo traveler, I brought my tripod with me. So glad I brought it. This is really a wonderful place to take beautiful photos. Behind me there is the main temple where people go to worship and pray and you do need to take your shoes off and I haven't been in yet so let's go have a look. They have some beautiful music playing in the background as well and just before you enter you can make a donation and take four of these xiang, I'm not sure what it's called in English, I know the Chinese name. Many people use them to pray to the goddesses and gods. Young, but I for some reason couldn't. I don't think I did it properly, but I'm gonna put it in. So behind me, there is the Chinese sea goddess Tian Ho. And for some reason, when I'm just in this temple, I feel so at ease. Everything is okay. It's 
it's a really special feeling in here. I just joined in and I said a little prayer inside for all my family. A lot of you have been asking about any religion that I have and I did grow up Catholic but now I don't give myself a label and I'm not saying anything about religion right now but I just truly believe that the core of everything, all faiths belief, is truly love. So when we love and accept each other, that is, that's key. Another thing I love about solo traveling is that you can spend as much time as you want, anywhere you want and create your own itinerary. So I've spent a while here so let's move on to the next place now. here in Little India now and this place is also known as Brickfield. I'm so excited to be here. It really feels like I've just suddenly stepped into India and I've been taking the Grab car everywhere recently. I was intending on using the MRT but the Grab taxi is just so convenient and it's pretty affordable as well. I've been looking around, there are lots of places to buy saris and it's just so beautiful. One day it's on the bucket list. I'm setting the intention out to the universe. I'm going to wear a sari one day. And there are lots and of course lots and lots of food places as well and I just came across this vegetarian place and I'm gonna have lunch here it's very exciting to have some sweets there too definitely need to take a bit of a break it's pretty hot my goodness look at all of these vegetarian options they look so good they have some Chinese ones some Indian curries and oh my goodness and even down here and you can pick anything that you like this found vegetarian food heaven <laughs> had so many options and this is my lunch plate here plate full of rice and lots of veggies Pumpkin, greens, eggplant. Looks amazing. Drinks? Ah, uh, no beagle. Thank you. Thank you. All this for eight ringgit. Wow. All right. I'm noticing that all the locals here are eating with their hands. This is amazing. So many different amazing flavors. Like. This might not look the prettiest but it is so so good and I noticed they have a banana leaf here which is a very traditional way of eating your food here in Little India. The lady working inside the restaurant was so nice, she was calling me sister and I love how it just makes us a lot closer. But yeah, there are some markets here as well, lots of fruits and lots of food here, lots and lots of food. Just came to have a look inside another little supermarket. To be completely honest, I'm just walking here to cool down from the heat out. I love the aircon. <laughs> oh, but they have lots of cool things I haven't seen before. A lot of it is from India, of course. Oh, shark cream. Yeah, I'm sure I've had this before. Actually, my sister loves this. And it's actually all vegan as well. Spicy mixture of fried pulses, peanuts, and ground flour noodles. Mm. This is just like a general grocery store. Asian specialties. They've got a lot of desserts out here as well. Wow. What's this? Don't bring it. Oh, what is it? Sweet. Sweet. Yeah, so that's Ella and it's sweet. Oh my goodness, look at what store I found. Bollywood! Wow, look at all these saris. That is just so beautiful. And you see the sky, you see the cloud, you see the Chinese culture there, yeah. you see the village. You can go to a Cameroon Highlands. Oh yes, I've heard of that. So do you speak Chinese then? Yes, I speak Mandarin, I speak Cantonese, I speak Hakka, wow. I speak Hokkien. Really? Yes. Wow. And Malay? Malay, yes. Wow. Some Malay and some English. I'm just coming back to the apartment now. I'm just going to cut up some fruit and have that as a snack. It's definitely way too hot to be walking around and exploring outside at the moment. The pears here are amazing. I'm also going to try this green mango this time. I've been getting the orange ones, but now I'm going to try this type. Oh, it smells so sweet. This is actually nature's candy. Never waste a bit of mango. <laughs> and now I'm just going to drizzle some of this coconut on top. And also I'm going to sprinkle some of this organic five spice mix. This is amazing. 
This is such an amazing combo. This spice mix is actually made by an Ayurvedic practitioner from Australia. I'm definitely getting more interested into different spices and their healing properties. Before I came back via Grab again and my driver was so nice and honestly throughout my whole travel so far I have only come across kind people. Probably most people, like 99% of people are kind. I think all beings are maybe just sometimes the ego gets in the way. Like 99% of people have good intentions. You just need to have an open heart when you travel and not just believe all the negative stories that you hear and sure it's important to be wary of these things when you travel you have to experience things for yourself so yeah he was telling me about secret places that only the locals know about places i can visit he was so nice and also while i was at little india a monk came up to me and he suddenly offered four books to me and said i could just choose any and if i wanted i could give a donation and they were all like spirituality books like yoga meditation it was like perfect divine timing and i really believe that every time something like this happens me when I'm offered a book or something it's always the universe sending me a message and I just listen to my intuition and I chose this one on meditation and I was having a look at it and it's so interesting it's like a nice little nighttime read before I go to bed and actually speaking of meditation this morning at the Tian Hall temple it really was like I was in a state of meditation and you know meditation doesn't just have to be sitting down and I always advocate and encourage you to meditate but it also to me includes doing things that you love and you're really immersed in like for me when I'm taking photos or videography or speaking my truth like right now is even like a meditation for me because I'm doing what I love and I shared yesterday on my Instagram actually that I wasn't really feeling my best I was in a bit of a funk and you know I'm just human we're all human and it's so important to embrace that and give yourself permission to feel everything it's perfectly normal to experience these negative feelings and I do too but I just don't give it power and I allow it to pass and I see these negative feelings such as feeling a little bit confused or down as teachers like where do I need to improve on do I need to pay more attention to in my life and what can I do now to raise my vibration again but I just let it pass yesterday and when I just shared it on my Instagram I did not expect so many of you or you, just your responses so many of you resonated and that's why I'm always vulnerable to share my true feelings and experiences with you I don't just always want to be perfect there's no such thing I have a lot of happy moments I've been really happy when I'm traveling but I still feel low sometimes and even for no reason and that's totally okay but yeah when I just go back into a state of meditation I meditated last night as well it really helped me to feel better and I feel a lot better today that's for sure and especially after that conversation with my grab driver he just really lifted my mood but yeah that is today's little insight give yourself permission to be human I actually made a whole podcast episode called give yourself permission I can leave that link in the description box below I really hope that you give that a listen oh actually also as for meditation dancing for me is like meditation too I've been sharing more of that on my Instagram and just being radically confident unapologetic about it and when I just listen to music that makes me feel really good I just dance to it and it instantly raises my vibration. Some of you have also been asking about my favorite songs and music that I listen to so I finally made a Spotify playlist for you I'll leave the link in the description box down below as well so you can check it out. I've arrived here now at Jalan Alor Street Night Market Okay, it's not technically oh, night at the moment. I guess this is still considered early since it's only around 5.30. I think more people will come out around 6 p.m. So yeah, things are just heating up now. It's known for the most popular hawker stalls and street food. So I'm excited to see what I can find. I can see lots of fruit stalls. I can see a Sichuan restaurant as well. That's interesting. Also Thai. So again, a very multicultural. I love it. Cakes there. More fruits and lots of sitting areas here as well. It goes on for pretty long as well, so it is quite a long strip. Lots of choices to choose from. Lots of coconut and sugar cane there. So many cuisines. Oh my goodness. I don't. Oh! <gasps> baked sweet potatoes yes this is a very popular place and i'm seeing a lot of vegetarian options as well or even vegan wow look at this this is like exotic star fruit with some chili on it that's so cool i wonder how that tastes noodles where are you from australia, australia. yeah oh, original malaysia chinese malaysia uh my mom is chinese oh mommy chinese yeah <laughs> vegetarian vegetarian again uh this one Bread oh, vegetarian, noodle vegetarian. There is a Cambodian Thai restaurant there. I've honestly never had Cambodian before. They have like some spring rolls. It looks so interesting. I could smell some. The chestnut hey, smell. Hey. You can really smell it. Do these skewer things as well and just choose whatever skewers you like and boil it. Ooh, they have dim sum. Oh my gosh, 
Yeah. Yeah. There's everything. <laughs> really don't know which place to choose. They have not only stalls like this, but also restaurants everywhere as well. Of course, they have the more nourishing things like juices and fruits, and they have more fried things. And of course, while I advocate for choosing what is most nourishing for your body, it's okay to just choose what you feel like as well without any restriction. I found some food now, and I'm so excited. And this is a very traditional Malay dinner. So I ordered some mixed vegetables with a fried egg and omelette and some rice of course and for me I think this experience coming to Jalan Alor is more just to experience and appreciate how food is appreciated here in Kuala Lumpur it's just so interesting to see the celebration of food in different cities of the world it's thinking very basic but I love it such a nice flavor you can taste the garlic this is really nice let's try this tomato fried egg very similar to the fancha chao ji dan that my grandma used to make or well, my grandma does make still but i just haven't had it in a while yeah i just wanted to say i love your box i recently just found it on youtube really yeah. oh thank you i thought i'd give you a hug I don't know how else to describe it. And if you're wondering, this restaurant that I'm eating at is called Yen Restaurant. I think the best way to describe this meal is very much like a home-cooked, really nice and warming meal. Malaysian meal. Not gonna lie, a bed literally just pooped onto my head. It happens, it actually does. It's getting super busy now. They've laid out even more tables here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thai food, so many have to say. Yeah. Yeah, chili crab, Thank you. Yeah. Good seafood, good barbecue seafood, uh, so many here. Thank you. So I mentioned this in the previous vlog, but every day I really do need to practice my boundaries because as you just saw, people are just coming to you everywhere and asking me to go to their store, their restaurant. Definitely have boundaries. This is one of the greatest lessons I came here to learn. I'm still improving on it and I get to share the journey with you. So when I was at the night market, I was walking and I came across a man who was just sitting on the street and clearly you could tell that he was burned, his whole face was burned and his arms, it could be from acid or from fire, but I just had to go and support him and I'm not sharing this to pity him or anything of course or to show off or anything. I just really want to encourage you. We can all support each other and even the little donation goes a long way and I, I just gave all the cash I had in my wallet. I just really cannot walk past that and not do anything. I really learned this from my mum. You know, every time when we were younger, we would walk past a homeless person or someone with a disability, even someone doing a performance on the street, my mum always encouraged encourage my sister and I to give a donation to always go and support them because we already have more than enough and yeah it was just humbling it reminded me to be grateful that I have a working hand and I have fingers I have eyes to see with so if this can encourage you to next time if you see someone like that to just give them something that would really mean so much and that that really really touched me today but aside from that I really enjoyed visiting the street market and I hope that you enjoyed today's video as well that it inspired you to come visit Kuala Lumpur and maybe opened your eyes to more cultures and just appreciating the diversity of this world there really is just something about Kuala Lumpur that's amazing so if you like this video do give it a thumbs up so I know I'd really appreciate it and subscribe if you haven't yet joined our beautiful community and I will see you in the next video remember that you are always so worthy you are incredible you are amazing I believe in you so no matter what your dream is always always believe in yourself see you in the next video